July 22, 1921, Godwin, North Carolina. David Marshall Williams was operating an illegal still when a local sheriff and five deputies swarmed onto the scene. He and his accomplices split, allowing the authorities to dismantle the setup and take the moonshine. But as the officers drove away, shots were fired from the surrounding woods, striking Deputy Sheriff Alfred Jackson Pate and killing him. One of the deputies on the scene identified Williams as the shooter, and he was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Had he been found guilty, he would have likely faced the death penalty. But after some good, old-fashioned court drama, Williams pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and received 30 years in the clink. For most people, this may seem like a death sentence to someone's future. 30 years in prison during the prime of your working life would ensure you get out just around or after retirement age. But surprisingly, Williams thrived in prison, so much so that they made a movie about him later, starring not Elvis, but Jimmy Stewart. It helped that he impressed Superintendent H.T. Peoples, played here by Wendell Corey, with his mechanical skills. As a result, Peoples allowed him access to the prison's machine shop, where Williams began servicing the weapons used by guards. At some point, he began drawing up new weapons, scribbling them on confiscated pieces of paper with confiscated pencils. Again, Peoples was impressed and had grown to trust Williams, so he let him actually build his prototype weapons in the shop. All in all, Williams designed and fabricated four semi-automatic rifles while behind bars. His most impressive creations, though, were two systems within these firearms, the floating chamber and the short-stroke gas piston. These allowed a 22 LR cartridge to create enough force to cycle a large caliber semi-automatic or full-automatic mechanism. This work inspired his family to try to commute his sentence. With the help of the widow of the man he murdered, they began petitioning the state of North Carolina in 1927 for his release. The state initially agreed to commute his sentence down to 10 to 20 years, but eventually reneged and let him out on September 29, 1929. With his newfound freedom, Williams continued to refine his firearms, obtaining several patents and a contract from Colt in 1933 to redesign the Colt Ace with his floating chamber. By the late 30s, he was contracted with Remington in the U.S. Ordnance Department, given the task of modifying their firearms with his floating chamber technology. Eventually, he was hired full-time by Winchester in 1939, where he would make perhaps his greatest contribution to the firearms world. In May 1941, the U.S. Army needed a new lightweight semi-automatic rifle, so they held a competition. One of those prototypes was a design by Williams, utilizing his innovative short-stroke piston. The weapon was called the M1 Carbine, and went on to win the competition, as well as the title Most Produced Service Weapon of World War II. Overall, more than 6 million M1 carbines were manufactured during the war, and it was praised by General MacArthur as being one of the most important factors in the victory in the Pacific. Not bad for a convicted murderer serving 30 years behind bars. What's your favorite firearm story? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to check out Raider Red's YouTube channel for more Strange Heartland history. I'm Christopher Pilney.